Today we're going to go over linear inequalities. The first thing we want to go over is how to write a linear equality given a situation. So here's an example word problem that you might see. So this is an example word problem that you might see whenever it has to do with inequalities. And it says a carpenter is building shelving units for a garage. A small shelf requires a total of eight boards to build, while a large one uses 12 boards. He has up to 35 boards to use for this project. What is the inequality that satisfies this situation? Um, so I want to give you a couple of steps that will help you put this together. So the first thing you want to do is to select the minimum or the maximum value that they give you. So the first thing you want to do is select the minimum or maximum value given, which is usually just the biggest number that they put out there. So all you need to do is find the biggest number. So in this case it's 35 boards. The second thing that they tell you that you need to do is to find the inequality. So you need to look around that big, big number to find what it is that we would use for the inequality or to figure out what the inequality is. And since in this one it says he has up to, so up to is the part that will tell you the inequality. So you have to kind of think about the way that the English is here. So he has up to 35 boards. Is it possible for him to have 36 if he has up to 35 boards? Well, no. So is it possible for him to still have 35 boards if he has up to 35 boards? Yes, because he has up to 35. Is it possible for him to have 34? up to 35 then yes. So if it includes 34 and 35 but not 36 then it would be less than and then since it includes 35 also equal to so less than or equal to 35. The third thing you want to do is find the first object and the amount of that object. So in this case the thing that we're looking at is um, the small shelf. If you read it says a carpenter is building shelving units for a garage. So shelving units is what he's really talking about. So the first type of shelving unit he's going to talk about is a small shelf. And the small shelf actually requires eight boards. So for every small shelf you're going to use eight boards. So you're actually multiplying. How many small shelves are you going to have each of them will be eight boards. I'll tell you how many total boards. So it would be eight and then you would come up with a variable for the small shelves. So in this case I'm just going to use S. So 8S. And then finish the rest of it we already found is less than or equal to 35. So eight boards for every small shelf has to be less than or equal to 35. But we're not talking about only small shelves. There's also another object and so we need to figure out what that object is. So keep reading. It says, um, well a large one, so a large shelf, that's the second thing, and it uses 12 boards. So the fourth one is find the second object in amount. So since it's 12 large boards, you're going to have 12 um, boards for every, I'm sorry, it's not 12 large boards, it's 12 boards for every large shelf. So for every large shelf that he builds it will require 12 boards. So it would be 12 times and then the variable you want to use for large. So in this case I'm just going to use L. So 12L. And since you're also including the other shelves, you would add shelves together, right? Because you would just do 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 eventually would get you to however many shelves you would have. So it's plus, and then finish what you wrote above, 8s is less than or equal to 35. And you're done. That's exactly all the information that you need, how you would put it together, and how you would write it as an inequality. So in this case, it's 12L plus 8S is less than or equal to 35. We're going to write the next word problem on the back of this, or well, the next part on the back of this page. Now we're going to go over how to graph inequalities. 
So first we need to go over how you deal with greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, and less than or equal to. How exactly do you graph that? Um, so there are going to be different types of lines. There's both solid or dashed. And then there's also, are you going to shade above or below? And all this you should have seen in Algebra 1, but we're going to go over it again. So there are line types. And then shaded above or below. So let's look at the four different inequalities. We have less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. So when we're talking about line types, what we actually need to look for are um, whether it's equal to or not. So I'm actually going to take these equal to's off and I'm going to show you kind of how to approach that. So in this case, there is no equal to, there is no equal to, and this one will have an equal, and this one will have an equal. So the different line types that that will have, actually I'm going to make these in a different color. So, so the one without equal to's, it means that um, the actual part of the equation, it doesn't include, it'll include everything above or below that line, but it doesn't include the actual line itself. So because it doesn't include the line itself, you can't have a true line. So it's going to be dashed. And then the equal to means that it does include the line. So it can have a true line. So it'll be just a straight line or a solid line. Next, we're going to look at if you're going to shade above or below that line that you draw. Um, and it has to do with the greater than or less than. So I'm going to redraw these in different colors so that you can see how they're related. So less thans will always be shaded below because less than, you've got to think that less than means less. So on a number line for the y-axis, that means going down because going down is towards the negative. So less than is below. Then we're going to redo these in another color. And then greater than means that you're getting bigger. And on your y-axis, getting bigger is going up, is getting more positive. So that is shaded above. So here's an actual example of an of, uh, inequality. So the first thing you want to do whenever you are looking at an inequality is, is it going to be a solid or a dashed line? And are you going to shade above or below? So this one is less than or equal to, which is right here. But remember, less than means you're going down, so it's below. And equal to means that it actually does equal the line. It actually does touch it, so you're going to have a solid line. Now you need an actual graph. So the first thing you want to do is just graph your line. And this one says, x plus 2, which means my y-intercept will be at 2. So graph that point. And then my slope, the number that's in front of x, there's no number there, which means that it's really 1. So if you have a slope of 1, you're going to go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. So, And then you just want to go in the opposite direction once you run out of room. So instead of going up 1, right 1, we're going to go down 1, left 1. And since it's a solid line, you would draw a straight line. And you're going to shade below that line, which means using the y-axis, you want to include everything that's below the line on the y-axis. So another thing you want to know about these are possible solutions or things that are not solutions. Um, so whenever you see it on a test, they could just give you a point like, negative 2, 4, and you'd have to find it on the graph and see if it's a possible solution. So things that could be solutions are things that are in the shaded area. So all of these points would obviously be possible solutions, um, but since it is equal to, even on the line works as possible solutions as well. So it would just have to be a point that's in the shaded or even on the line if it's equal to. Um, then you want to look for things that are not solutions. So these are just the unshaded area. So it's only in the unshaded area. So now let's look at another example. 
So in this example, we actually need to solve for y first because we need to get y by itself. So the first thing you want to do is subtract 2 from both sides. Just bring your y over 2 down because we're not doing anything to that. Um, a positive 2 minus 2 gives me 0, so they cancel. Bring your greater than down. And then x and negative 2 can't go together, so you just write them by each other. Then to get rid of a um, fraction, to get rid of dividing by 2, you do the opposite, which is multiplying both sides by 2. In this case, you're going to multiply everything by 2. So a 2 times a half, or a 2 divided by 2, is just 1. So that cancels to give you just 1y, which is greater than, and we need to distribute this 2 to everything on the inside. So 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times a negative 2 is negative 4. So are we going to shade above or below? Is it going to be solid? Is it going to be dotted? So in this case, we are looking at greater than only, which is this one. So it will be a dashed line, and we're going to shade above. So we need to graph first. So we start with the y-axis. Um, in this case, our y-intercept is negative 4, so we're going to graph, put a dot on negative 4. 4. And then our slope is 2, which means you go up to right 1 because any whole numbers are over 1, which means my fraction is 2 over 1. So up to right 1, up. And then this line will be dash, so it will not be a solid line, it'll be dash. And it says that we are shading above on this one, so everything above the line on the y-axis, so everything up here. Now we need to look at possible solutions. In this case, the possible solutions do also have to be in the shaded area. They can be anywhere in the shaded area. Only in this case, they cannot, cannot be on the line. Because this line is dashed, it means that it does not equal to anything on that line. So it is not a possible solution if it's on the line. In fact, it is not a solution that's on the line. So anything that's on this line is not a solution. And of course, anything that's outside of the shaded area is also not a solution. And that's the end of your notes.